So as usual, I was scrolling Twitter and I'm gonna say it, Nintendo really does hate money. Now, a lot of us have been asking for things from Nintendo for years at this point in time. I think it's become very common that a lot of Nintendo fans would like Nintendo to take our money. A lot of the times we yell, scream about this, and often we are joking about it, but there are a lot of things that Nintendo fans want. A lot of you guys ask for Mother 3, if I remember correctly, and on top of that, we always want just more games in just different directions of certain things. I ask for clothing. I would love for Nintendo to give me those buttons. I don't know why they thought that nobody else would want them. There are so many ideas that people can think of. Even just say, for instance, even with Splatoon, people are like, yo, I would actively pay for more weapons if we did an expansion. And there are a lot of people that would agree to the fact that they would love just other little things in the game. Now there's one thing and a one huge thing that Nintendo, when it comes to actually doing something that would actually make them a lot of money, it is Smash Bros skins. Now just think about it for a second. We've all talked about this. This is something that legitimately we've gone on about for forever. A lot of people do it with mods. A lot of people do it just in different ways. Now I saw this because of somebody on, you guys know it, Twitter, and they said Smash Bros alt skins are the most missed potential ever in any media ever. I'm so serious. Now I will admit with you guys about this. I do think that they missed out on this opportunity because there were a lot of things that they actively could have done. If they weren't gonna put Shadow inside the game, they could have gave Sonic a skin. It would make that lame playstyle actually look somewhat interesting. And to be real with you, a lot of other characters could have done this. Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, they could have just given it a skin. It didn't have to be like, you know, I forgot what they called them, but you know what I mean. And basically, yeah, they could have done a lot more with this. Captain Falcon could have just had so many different iterations of colors and things like that. Some people even brought up the fact that you could look at, and if you look at Jigglypuff, you can have the bandanas. You can have all those little things that have been missing. You can do callbacks if you even want to. Now, for a lot of people, they look at this and actually say, like, this is a missed opportunity because they did this with the Miis. Now, everybody looks and probably says, like, I, I really don't care about the Miis. And it's like, why did you guys think that that's what people wanted? There was somebody that actually did the math for all of this and basically really talked about the fact of how much Nintendo hates money. You guys are gonna hear that from me a lot because Nintendo hates money. Now, this was from Hungrybox that said, I like playing the game where I estimate how much money Nintendo missed out on by not having purchasable alt skins. Alt sold 34 million copies. Let's just say one in three gamers wanted to buy alt skins for their mains. Even at $10 average spent, this would have been over $100 million. That is a lot of money. And to be honest, I think that they probably would have made more because they probably would have been at a point where a lot of people would want these skins. To be honest, a lot of people enjoy playing Smash Brothers. And if they had different skins, as a lot of people are just even showing just different types of skins that they showed for this, it actually really would have been a good idea. Now, it does seem like Nintendo, and I have to give Nintendo their credit here, it seems like they hold on to something dear when they do something and they want to do it absolutely right. Or they want to stay within the theme of the game. That's probably why they did it for the Miis, because maybe they felt like, what if they didn't, weren't able to do costumes for every single character? And then some people were like, oh, what about this one? What about that one? What if they didn't want to put all that time into it? I don't know. And to be honest, nobody can actually tell you what's going on for the future of this game. Maybe they'll do it in the next one. You know, Nintendo takes a long time to do certain things, but it would actually be a really good idea. And I think Nintendo, when it comes to it, they've been trying to stay super far away from what's been normalized in gaming. I, I guess they're just like, nah, we don't want to do this to our the actual player base. And they don't want to do that. They would rather get people to play more games. And that's something that they actively have stood on. So maybe that's what it is. But what do you think? And if you think his math is off, you can blame HBox for that, not me. I'm, I'm not the math guy. But what you can do for me is like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I thank you to all of those that actually have been saying, yo, you've been doing a great job. Thank you for the videos. I actually enjoy this. I really do appreciate it. And it really is validating. Don't forget I stream. You guys know the spiel already. It's Fridays, Saturdays, pick a time. I'll be there. and. 
Yeah. So Pokemon has been actually been talked about a lot on Twitter lately right now. We've been seeing a lot of topics just around like what's been going on with the future of Pokemon and just people questioning what's going to be happening. And somebody by the name of Snivy Pokemon 21 says it's been more than five months and we don't even know what the game looks like. They're so quiet. And I kind of recognized that also. I was like, yo, we really don't know anything besides like the layout that they just showed. And that was really it. But I will say, and somebody brought up a great point. The NCS master says Pokemon locking in and going silent for at least a year is unironically the best case scenario for this franchise. And to be real with you guys, I actually agree. I'm somebody that I think that like they don't need all of the games that they were producing at one point in time. I think that it could have just been like, you know, knocked off just a little bit. I did love Legends of Arceus. I'm going to be honest. I love that game. It was very good. But when it came to Scarlet and Violet, that was when I looked and I was like, yo, they need to take a little bit more time and actively work on it. Now, sadly, I've said this before, and I a lot of people, they accept this method from Pokemon. And as I've said, it's just like McDonald's. Some people can stomach anything as long as they get their fries. And to be honest, that was what went on with this right here. So this was Soul Silver Art, and they said, for me, it's super disheartening to see at least four other posts with these similar opinions blowing up. Nothing against the original poster, we just have different views and that's perfectly fine. And I'm probably in the minority, but I strongly disagree with this pushed idea that so many in the Pokemon community believe it's like people aren't Pokemon fans anymore. And I kind of disagree with that. I, I don't think that people aren't Pokemon fans. I think that people just would like better quality. So they continued on to say, more Pokemon content for us should always be a win, unless it's been years of unplayable or the lowest possible quality game, but it hasn't. And I trust Game Freak to deliver a decent Pokemon game. To be honest, as I said, there are people that will consume a lot of what goes on. There are still people playing 2K, Call of Duty, and I'm sorry to say that Pokemon is encroaching that territory. And there are people that are gonna defend it. And I don't think that like, it's really the biggest deal ever because they seem to enjoy it and the sales show that people actively enjoy it. Can I just be a Pokemon fan and let the devs be devs? Can't I be excited to get new Pokemon content whenever I possibly can? Just a new Pokemon design revealed to hype me up? No, I don't, I don't think there's actively anything wrong with that at all. Like nobody can take away your joy at the end of the day. To be honest with people, one of the things I will say is if you are actively looking for joy, delete Twitter and just watch my channel. Like that's one of the best things that you can do. But they continued on to say, also people are saying no news, being quiet is good. That makes zero sense. Even if the devs are putting all their time and effort into making the game, even if it takes them years, that doesn't mean we can't get hype trailers or info on the games in the meantime. I'm gonna be real with you. There is so much Pokemon content and one of these things that you have to realize this might be like overconsumption at this point. It's fine if they enjoy it. That's perfectly fine. But people having criticisms shouldn't take away from your joy. Now, there are people that have gone overboard, and I'll be very honest with you about that. You can find them all over YouTube. The devs don't run the marketing. They are not connected in that way. Promotional trailers or news updates do not stop or hinder the devs working on the game, LOL. If the game isn't ready to be shown yet, just give us a little tease of the concept of the game or the Pokemon. I think, again, as I said, this is overconsumption at this point. I don't think that they're wrong for wanting information. I think that's what makes us human. Don't get me wrong about this. I do think that's what makes us human. When I was a kid, I used to go search all over on the internet to look for certain things and I would be hype about it. So I'm not gonna say that there's, it's absolutely wrong. I have said it a million times, there's fans of Pokemon and then there are fans of video games. These lines blur a lot, but I think fans of Pokemon want more Pokemon in a reasonable time frame no matter what, and fans of video games just want AAA games. There is some truth to the fact that yes, some people just want AAA games. Yes, that, that is true. But what a lot of people want is a good, consistent game. It's still a game at the end of the day. Like if you enjoy Pokemon in every single game that comes out, there are certain people that absolutely love what goes on with certain things like that. But it doesn't mean you can't question the quality. I think that that's where it gets a little weird. 
It's like if the Pokemon didn't hit at a certain standard to certain people, a lot of people would actively complain about that, even if you weren't a video game fan or Pokemon fan yet alone. So they continued on to say, it's okay if you don't agree, but I've just got to put this opposing view out there too. Just so TPCI ever sees any of this, they'll know that we aren't all for them taking four plus years to make a game while doing zero marketing for it. I don't think that was like what the point of the, that post was about at all. Like I, I, th I think that actively the post was just saying that like, yo, we haven't heard anything about this game and that's, that's really it. But it, it's also to the fact that like, yeah, they look like they're locking in for this game. I think that this game looks like and how they're going about it and you're gonna find something out like it, it's how it goes when the game is going to be like pushed because they're going to market the game they are a guys game freak nintendo pokemon company they make too much money to not market this stuff so they're going to market it you're going to get your pokemon there's always going to be pokemon out there it's one of the biggest like media just in general i don't think you can go out without having pokemon in the year 2024 it's just not going to happen so something's gonna come something will be shown and that's probably how it will go and they'll probably still give you more games it's it's a massive company people just want them to use the money that they have towards their video games even though they make more money in plushies cards and all those things but yeah what do you guys think about that funny enough while i was recording this pokemon mystery dungeon red rescue got announced for coming to the switch online expansion that's kind of crazy that i was talking about what i was talking about just now and then this came out so it's going to be on the switch expansion if you're nso if you guys know that already i actually played this game i didn't beat it ever i think i always have played them i just never beat them for some reason i was a kid i didn't understand why it wasn't similar to the other pokemon so that was it but hey maybe i'll give this a try and let me know what you think so as you know a lot of people like to actively call games dead games so it has to deal with the fact that who's playing that game how many people are playing it and a lot of people seem to actually care about this for some reason. If you like a game, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. But with a game like Pal World that still actively, I think, has 40 something thousand players like a day, they have been called out actively for basically, oh, people have moved on from this game. Nobody cares about this game anymore. So there was an article from VGC that says a Pal World developer says playing the same game all the time is not healthy for players or the industry. Such behavior encourages the development of more soulless live service games that come out then get shut down nine to 12 months later, he claimed. Wow, that is something actually big to say because I know some people who have very big opinions on Power World in itself. So the article actually says, speaking to Going Indie YouTube channel, the games community manager, John Buckley's, better known to players as Bucky, responded to claims that Power World is a dead game because it's a daily peak concurrent player count is around 60,000 rather than the more than 2 million it hit at launch. Buckley argued that the game was never designed to be played forever and that doing so serves no purpose to players. Yes, if you play the game, the game has an endpoint to it. There's nothing actually to do after that except going back and replaying the same thing again. It's not like that. So they continue to say, according to Buckley, if players continue to play the same title, it will enforce the belief among publishers and developers that more live service games are the way forward, looting the market. I feel like this is more like a hindsight thing because didn't that kind of happen? I don't think you need to be pushing yourself to play the same game all the time, Buckley said. It's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for developers. It's not healthy for gamers. It's not healthy for gaming media. Can I be honest with you guys for a second? The reason why I wanted to look at this article is because of the fact that this is something that I had to learn for myself. And I'm not saying this in a bad way, I just realized that there's so many more games to play. There's so many more things to explore. When I started treating gaming more like how I treat music and basically started feeding my taste instead of just taking everything in. So I realized that for myself that it was something I needed to do personally. So they continued on to say, and it's just not healthy for our industry because the more we push this kind of narrative, the more very large companies are going to just say gamers want more live service. And I, I think we saw that. And we're just going to get more of the soulless live service games that come out 
then get shut down nine to 12 months later because they're not making enough money and we all lose in that case. Instead, Buckley said players should play a wider variety of games, especially indie games, to focus more on having fun than committing to a single game like Cow World. To be real, I think that, that that's what the gaming industry wanted because they wanted to make a bunch of money off of people. So now people are doing exactly what the gaming industry wanted them to do when it comes to Fortnite, when it comes to your Apex Legends, your League of Legends. So that's basically what people kind of wanted. Play all the indies you can, he said. Spend as much money on indies as you can. Really, really support the guides who are trying to make fun games. Who cares if there's only five people playing? Just enjoy yourself, just enjoy games. I don't think it needs to be any more complex than that. This isn't the first time Buckley has responded to discourse about Pal World's dropping player count by encouraging players to broaden their horizons. Back in February, Buckley advised fans to try playing other games while they wait for Pal World content updates. There are so many amazing games out there to play, he said at the time. You don't need to feel guilty about hopping from game to game. If you are still playing Power World, we love you. If you're no longer playing Power World, we still love you. And we hope you'll come back for round two when you're ready. Play lots of games, try different genres, and frequently flick through indie libraries to find hidden gems. And that's what gaming really just used to be, was just trying to find games that would you would actively enjoy. A lot of things have changed, times have changed, and people like to know numbers. And I, I don't know why. It does interest a lot of people on the internet. It's the easiest way to get somebody to interact and engage with something. You see it all the time in the music industry when people look at album sales and when you're talking about art, I'm sorry to say, not all the time do sales matter when it comes to art. There are many movies, there are many shows, there are many, many forms of media that have done terribly and they were really good. And a lot of people just didn't know about them and that's all it is. So I think it's important, I actually do. I really have learned that variety is somewhat a good thing and that's just my opinion. What's yours? So something absolutely crazy is happening in the gaming industry and it's starting because of Bungie. But a lot of this situation is happening because of the fact that they had to lay off some of their staff. So basically this was from Bungie. This morning we shared an important update with the Bungie team on the difficult decision to eliminate 220 roles at Bungie. You can read the full statement below. Sadly, in the gaming industry and in the tech industry, there have been a lot of layoffs. I think that there was even a huge layoffs with Intel literally yesterday. And sadly, this has been the course of action that's been happening because of either overcompensating or greed. And basically, that's one of the things that was overcoming with it. But one of the things that a lot of people did not expect is this right here. Bungie CEO Pete Parsons reportedly spent over $2.3 million buying classic cars after the Sony acquisition. This was uncovered the same day he made a statement saying they laid off 220 employees because the company has been dealing with financial challenges. Now, if you understand that it is dealing with greed and a lot of these people are extremely, and when I mean extremely, extremely greedy, there were people that have even been showing clips of it Literally, they shown the cars. It shows all the bids that were made. And it's absolutely kind of validates the fact when you say that like the CEO needs like 40 yachts. Well, in this case, he wanted classic cars. But a person by the name of NIB on Twitter says, an ex-employee of Bungie who was laid off calls on Bungie CEO Pete Parsons to step down, also says he's a liar and a thief and claims this isn't on Sony, but Bungie leadership. Pete has also supposedly bought a whopping 24 vehicles from a single auction site since the acquisition closed in July 2022, totaling 2 million in cost. Presumably part funded by what Leanne refers to as the giant Sony payout. Pete privatized his Twitter account earlier today. Now that is a very crazy situation. I will have what's up from the person that says this. They actually quote retweeted and said, step down, Pete. You're a liar, thief, and so many things we can't discuss publicly. Step down and without the giant Sony payout. 
This isn't on Sony. This is squarely on the failure of leadership, plain and simple. And these people have to be upset because these people are people that enjoy games and they just wanted to work on games and not be absolutely screwed over by the company that they work for. This has just been something that's been going on throughout the whole entire industry. And it's actually kind of great just to see how greedy some of these people are and you get to call them out for their greed. But there was one thing that was out there about like some false information that got cleared up by a person by the name of Jason Schreier that says, just to clear up some rumors floating around, Destiny 3 was not canceled because it was never in development. Per people familiar, Bungie did some very early work on a spinoff project called Payback, but they canceled that a while ago. I'll have a story tomorrow with more info and I'm recording this the day before, so they, I will probably see it on Monday. Also, just to confirm who they are, they are a reporter from Bloomberg. And the last topic of the day is about the poll that I asked you guys in my community post, which said, which Nintendo console do you own the most games on? And I asked this about the Wii U, the Wii, GameCube, and Nintendo Switch. Now, 80% of you said the Nintendo Switch. 2% of you said the GameCube, it makes sense just based off of math. Wii was 13% and the Wii U was 5%, which it deserves by the way. But I know that the Wii is kind of up there because I think that I, I have to relook at it actually if I ever go back to my house and see that like how many Wii games I had because I had a lot of Wii games and I'm thinking about it now, I had a tower of them. Like there was just so many things that I used to have and it, I don't know if it's gonna be between the digital and the physical, like if it, if it compares like in that way, because I do have a lot of digital games on my Switch. I also do enjoy having that. I, I like being like, you know, collecting what I like, having a minimalist, like certain amount of things. That's, that's, that's just me. I don't know why. But the one thing that I did see, I understand this. Yes, for some of you that said, I never owned a GameCube. I get it, I'm old. Please let me like live in peace. One of you even said, I saw GameCube at my grandparents' house. Now, I can believe that possibly maybe it was your parents' GameCube, but that just makes it even worse because it makes me realize that a lot of you only have played the Switch. There's some of you guys watching this video that the Switch is all you know. There's a possibility. Some of you, the Wii U is all you know. And to me, that's crazy as a person that got to like play the Sega Genesis and got Sonic and Knuckles for my birthday. But that's gonna be it for me today, guys. I'm gonna catch you guys later. Don't forget, go on your walks. Like it's actually very important. I keep telling you guys this actively, go on your walks. It makes a huge difference in just your mood and everything about yourself. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys later. Have an amazing day. Peace out.